Texas Republicans will make their third attempt to push new voting restrictions as Democratic lawmakers urge Congress to act. Governor Greg Abbott announced a new legislative session will begin on Saturday. Meanwhile, pressure is mounting on Democrats in Washington to take action. The Washington Post reports today, quote, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has signaled that additional votes on voting rights are likely before the Senate breaks for the summer. Despite the lack of final agreement, Democrats and allied advocacy groups are eager to show progress and return Capitol Hill's attention to voting rights. Joining us to talk about it all, Don Calloway, Democratic strategist and founder of the National Voter Protection Action Fund, and Mark McKinnon, former advisor to both George W. Bush and John McCain. He's also among the co-hosts of the circus on Showtime. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Goodness. It's morning somewhere. Hi to both of you. Uh, Don, let's start with you. Um, there is, uh, There are advocacy groups that are keeping the pressure on uh, through the so-called summer of action. We continue to see arrests being made, demonstrations, uh, members of Congress facing arrest, arrests on Capitol Hill. There is something out there that feels like it hasn't felt since the late 1960s in terms of pressure uh, as it relates to voting ad, uh, voting uh, rights. There was even an ad using the words of Martin Luther King to put pressure on Joe Biden to do something about this. Let's play this ad and get your take on it on the other side. Senators who will use the filibuster to keep the majority of people from even voting. And certainly they wouldn't want the majority of people to vote because they know they do not represent the majority of the American people. President Biden, please tell the Senate, reform the filibuster. Everything is at stake. Don, your thoughts on the movement right now and the effect that it's having? I think that, that you said the perfect word, Ali. It's a movement, not a moment. When the Texas Democrats came up here three weeks ago, there was an opportunity to make it a moment, and it would have been a cool moment, and they would have gone back home and figured out a way to not be arrested. But this is a movement, a la the summer of 1964, the Freedom Summer of 1964, in which hundreds of and thousands of Americans went down to Alabama, Mississippi, and fought for voting rights. We are back in that in that mo that we are back in that movement moment right now, and it's very exciting to watch here in Washington D.C. Uh, my hometown Congresswoman Cori Bush and the fight for uh, to to extend the eviction moratorium. Uh, people are really sensing that Congress need not go. They're sensing a sense of urgency and they don't want Congress to break for a month and miss the urgency and miss the moment we have. So I'm so excited to see so many different people activated on so many different things, but particularly voting rights. And as a Democrat who does this stuff, there's a lot of optimism that Senator Manchin is coming around, that members of the more moderate part of the Republican Party are coming around to some different voting rights proposals and that we can get some votes on the table. Right. And, and, and people have put obvious proposals out there that if you also are concerned about your precious filibuster, just carve voting rights out of it and you can keep the filibuster. But, Mark, I, you know, this is a little this is inside and outside the beltway stuff. Uh, the average American doesn't care about the filibuster. The, the, the potential damage that everybody at Capitol Hill is worried about if they get rid of the filibuster. I don't think it's a real thing out there in America. Well, uh, Ali, I've done campaigns for over 30 years, I've probably done more than 100 of them. And not once in 30 years have I ever heard a voter say, please protect the filibuster. Yeah. Nobody outside Washington has any idea what it is. It's the most inside Washington thing there is. And uh, it's it, it's it's and listen, the practical realities are Don's right. I think it is. A, it is a a movement more than a moment. But there's some practical realities here. And the practical realities are that there is no way that this is going to pass with 60 votes. Uh, it's, it's doubtful that it could get in a reconcilia reconciliation package, which would need only 50 votes uh, legally. And even if it could, right now, I, I think it's highly doubtful that you get Manchin and Cinema on the bill anyway. And I, and, I, and I don't think you're going to get any Republican votes on this. So, listen, I'm a prisoner of hope. I'm radical about this. I think that the greatest fraud in America is the notion that there's any systemic voter fraud. There is zero evidence of that. Absolutely zero. There's been six months now of Republicans, lawsuits, millions of dollars spent, not a zip zero. So, Don, let's go back to this idea of a moment. There are different people of from different, different walks of life who are coming around to this idea that, A, we don't have a voter fraud problem to solve. We can all agree that there should be no voter fraud, but none of these laws, particularly in Texas, that they're putting through, and, and many in Georgia, they're, they're, they seem to be geared more around stopping people from voting or overturning uh, results of votes. Do you feel that 
people in general, and maybe Democrats more specifically, but people in general are starting to see this movement and seeing people be arrested and see marches and saying, this is really a serious matter and it's about democracy and we've got to put our backs in it. My, my underlying question here is, are people who are not affected by this moved by it? Well, ultimately, I think that everybody's affected by it. So it's very difficult to carve out a universe of people who are unaffected. What I have started to see is that people are paying attention who really otherwise would be paying attention to the pennant races heating up and paying attention to the Olympics. Uh, you're starting to see a convergence around a lot of things that where people might not understand the filibuster or people might not understand the nuances of voter suppression versus ballot box protection, people are starting to pay attention. When you see the January 6th commission meeting, when you see preachers and, and camping out for voting rights, when you see this, the Texas Democrats all here within a span of 30 days, people are aware that there is some type of alchemy happening around the concept of preserving democracy. And while all of these individualized uh, issues and causes of the day may not be about the same discrete CRETE issues, they're all about the bigger picture of preserving democracy. And if you're here in Washington, D.C., it's all against the backdrop of four years of Trump culminating in an insurrection on January 6th. People didn't like that. People that didn't sit well with people. And it's good that we're now having the voting rights discussions and the overall movement discussions to kind of tie all this stuff together and say, hey, whether we like it or not, whether we agree or not, we have a democracy to preserve. And I think that people in middle America or people who don't follow this stuff every day are starting to come on board to the overall discussion of democracy preservation.